Welcome back to the course and congratulations for getting this far. We're in the final straights really now. So we've covered quite a bit so far. Uh, we've included getting data onto the mind map in a really fast and efficient way. We then started looking at the properties of nodes to change the, the fonts, the colors, the sizes and all the line colors. We then looked at streamlining that process, which is using styles and themes. And then we really started adding lots of nice stuff for the mind map. So relationships, images, borders, attachments, and then finally drilling down into different nodes and also adding new sheets and linking the sheets backwards and forwards from the main sheet. So really getting into the nitty gritty of the, of the mind map. So at this point, it's really useful to be able to share our mind map. Very often you might just be using the mind map for yourself, either for a new project or as a productivity tool. But also, if you have been making a mind map, it's very often the case where you want to share it with others. The sharing can either be as a mind map itself or in many other formats. And we're going to look at all of those in this video. So the first part of sharing is actually getting our mind map into other applications. Very often the mind map will look great, but other people might just want it in, say, a PowerPoint presentation or a Word document or a PDF or just as an image. Although at, at any stage they can obviously download XMind, the free version, and have a look at the XMind in its native format. But let's start with the export menu. Now there's two ways of doing this. You can either go to File and Export, or you can just come up to the ribbon and click on the Export icon and you're presented with this dialog. Now I'm not going to go through each of these in detail, but I will go through some of the pertinent ones. But to begin with, we'll just look at what we've got here, which is uh, documents, Word and PDFs, RTFs, texts. We have a Gantt chart if you uh, have got uh, the pro version, just straight images, but PDFs and SVGs as well. I'll look at the PDF map because it is really useful just to get an, an image of your mind map. FreeMind, MindJet Mind Manager Map Pro version, and an earlier version of XMind as well. Uh, presentation software, so PowerPoint, and finally a spreadsheet format. But we'll start off right at the top just converting our mind map into an HTML document. So if we click on HTML and go next to include many different things. So you can either have all these different uh, attributes, hyperlinks, attachments, markers, um, so you can click all on, or you can just select the ones you want. And at the beginning, you have the option to have a separate overview picture, which can be very useful. So if we click on that and then finish, this is going to go onto my desktop. It takes a few seconds just to run through. So we'll just open with um, Explorer. This is what we get. It's not always completely predictable exactly how these are going to turn out, but you will get the images and you will get the different levels of the different nodes. And I'll go through this a little bit more later, but you can see we've got all the skills and it's basically gone from a mind map into a, a bullet point type of format, but in HTML, but including all the pictures and links. We'll go back, have a quick look at the Word version. So we click on Word and next we can include everything an overview so in a similar way to html the export to word option will also include or exclude whatever you want onto the word document so you'll see when you're doing html or word documents or even csvs and powerpoints there is an order in which the mind map then gets delivered onto the uh, microsoft document it may seem a little bit random to begin with, but once you've got used to exactly the order that you've put onto the mind map, you'll see that it's coming out in a similar order. It's never going to be perfect, but it may just give you something to start off with. And if you've been doing brainstorming and you want sections and bullet points, then this may be quite a good way to do, but it really is a matter of trial and error. So we just finish this. It will run through very quickly and then we'll be presented with a Word document. So we have 
an index of what's happening then we have our first map and then it includes the pictures that we've included onto the mind map and also includes small sections of uh, each of the parts of the of the mind map so it can be really useful if you if you know what you're aiming for and you get to know mind the mind mapping uh, obviously you can move all these areas around but it's it's not a bad start to converting to a word document from this mind map you can see where things are, are going into the word document and it's just taking images and taking snapshots of each of the sections of the mind map and putting into the word document this is just something that you'll have to play with sometimes it'll be useful and sometimes not so we'll do the PDF and this will give you similar options to word and we can put all of these in at a separate and we can just a uh, separate overview of pictures and finish and we'll get a similar uh, look but just on the uh, PDF version and here we go We've got 13 pages being generated and very much like the Word document, it's taking snapshots of different areas, picking up the images and creating a PDF document of your mind map. The Gantt chart export into Microsoft Project I won't go through in this video. You'll need a, a version of Microsoft Project. Images are very useful, so we can just create an image and we can just uh, get the sizing right. So if we want the whole thing and you can see the sizing changing, uh, we just add it to a file and we'll put it on desktop again. And this can be a BMP or we can just decide what sort of file we want. We can put it into a JPEG as, or GIF file or a JPEG generating preview file we finish and then we load it up so that's a nice quick way of just exporting to a JPEG file PDF map and SVG images are both very useful if you're going to be zooming in at all into your mind map both PDF and vector images which means they you don't have any loss of quality as you zoom in and I'm going to show you an example of this. So if we create a PDF map of our mind map. So I'll just export to um, a PDF image next. And we have health already as a PDF from our previous export. So we'll just call this one map. So this is our health map. And this time it just goes into a PDF. Uh, just as really as an image rather than having all the different sections specified and there we go zooming into this PDF uh, you can see there's no loss of quality there's no pixelation on this PDF which can be very useful in certain circumstances now I'm just going to give you an example of uh, using a PDF map or an SVG where any amount of zooming has no effect on the quality at all and a good is illustration of this is to take a a PDF map and import it into a Prezi presentation so I'm just going to do that now so here we go we'll go into Prezi so here I've imported into a Prezi presentation my mind map from the PDF map that I exported from XMind and from here you can see how brilliantly it can zoom in and out without losing any quality at all so in we go and we can move up to exercise this was put together in two minutes really so um, just nice easy stress and relax and back out to the full mind map so you can see a great illustration if you want to do a presentation on Prezi uh, using your mind map and zooming into different parts or even if you want to do a Prezi presentation that's then captured onto video using screen capture and use the videos presentation then this can all be done through the PDF map which is fantastically useful okay we'll have a quick look at exporting to a PowerPoint presentation what I'm going to do is open a different mind map and this is just from the templates because it gives a good illustration 
of the order that things come out in PowerPoint presentations. So here we've got a weight loss program and it's just on the standard templates. We've got day one, meal, breakfast, lunch, sport, some times, running, day two, etc. And just have a, have a quick look at the way this runs around in a, in a circle. The actual central topic is a balanced map up to down and this just works around uh, day one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So that's that's how it works. Now, if we have a look at the export function, we'll go to PowerPoint next. We'll have uh, keep all the settings on, so hyperlinks, markers, etc. And we'll have the separate overview picture at the beginning. Uh, I'll save it to the desktop. Finish. Open PowerPoint. And here you can see the way that this has exported. So actually I'll run a, I'll run the presentation. So the weight loss program is obviously the central topic. This gives us the, the basic map uh, of uh, what we're gonna do, day one, day two on the right, up to day five, day seven. And as we click through, you can see it's separated into separate slides, day one starting. It adds a screenshot of this section on day one into the meals, breakfast, lunch, dinner, sport, times, running, running. Then we are on to day two, starting. We have a little green shot for day two, meal, breakfast, lunch, dinner, sport, day three. And you can see the way this works. So it's just working out in a sequence, uh, starting from day one to day seven, and then rolling through each of the subtopics and putting them into a separate slide. So that just gives you an idea of exactly how uh, XMind uh, decides on splitting these slides up. And this would go for PDFs, for HTML documents, and for Excel documents as well. Uh, so we'll just click out of that and come out. So this, if you want to do a quick test, this, this one would be a good way to do it. We could also click on here, uh, do properties, and say, for example, do a tree chart to the right. And you can see what happens with this one is that it's a tree chart and it's just running through. A, and actually, if you've converted it to a tree chart, you can see probably more obviously exactly how the how XMind is splitting it into the PowerPoint presentation. So starting with the weight loss program, day one, the subtopics, again subtopics, day two, and working through and making a different slide for each of them. So I hope that makes sense. Sometimes it doesn't seem that logical the way XMind is actually splitting these, but uh, if you take a good example that has a really good specific order, then the slides will make more sense. And finally, we have an export to a Excel file or a CSV file. And this will just break up the same as the others. There's a few options here, and I would suggest you just have a little play. This is the default as it is, but we'll just finish it and see what it looks like. Once you understand the conversion process, then it's easy to build the mind map in a way that you would want. But you can see these have just broken down into the different uh, nodes and the different topics and subtopics and then dropping into the next level. So basically it's gone into level one, level two, level three, level four. Can be useful, but I think you need to know exactly how it's going to end up. And this is just one of uh, trial and error on these exports. So another nice feature in the pro version is just to capture a section of your mind map and you can do this using tools and map shot or pressing the F7 key. So if I click on there, I'm then presented with a crosshair uh, cursor selector. Um, I select the area that I want. I just double click it and it gets saved to my desktop and I just open it from there. And it's really that easy. So F7, select the area you want, double click, and you've saved a, a PNG file to wherever you, your default setup is.